And welcome to our segment, second segment of this NFL show. <clears throat> One quick note to pass along to the fans of the Redskins out there. It was seven years ago today that Sean Taylor which was, had passed away. So, thoughts and prayers to the Taylor family on this Thanksgiving day. So, <clears throat> let's get back to our picks. Vikings-Panthers. <laughs> I will say that I was a bit surprised that my original Vikings-Packers pick last week was pretty close to accurate. I figured since the Packers were on the road, no way they'd score over 50 points. On the other side, Carolina, they've had a rough year. Ever since beating the Lions, surprisingly, they have struggled. But so is the rest of the NFC South, and it looks like it'll cost a potential... 10-plus win team a playoff spot. Seeing as the Vikings cut it close with Green Bay, I think they finish, they seal the deal here against Carolina. Minnesota 20, Panthers 14. Steelers, Saints. Well, Big Ben hasn't been able to keep his unbelievable pace lately, but then again, you can't expect six touchdown passes every single week. <laughs> That's just not common. But what is common when the Steelers franchise is winning, the Steelers have been doing that. The Saints, they haven't. Losing three in a row in the Superdome is absolutely terrible. Drew Brees and the Saints had a great chance at home to take control of the NFC South. Now, the question is, who wants to win the NFC South? Like, who wants to be a millionaire? Who wants to win the NFC South? The Saints won't win it this week, but neither will the rest of the division. Steelers 27, Saints 20. Rams, Raiders. Well, congratulations to the Oakland Raiders. I didn't think they'd win a game this year. But they get that elusive first win. One thing is true, that they play hard for interim head coach Tony Sperano. I still wish they had gotten rid of Dennis Allen at the end of last year. The Rams almost beat San Diego. Heck, they should have. Sean Hill throws a pick in the end zone to seal the deal. But it seems that the Rams are starting to play the Jeff Fisher football that we know of in Tennessee. Keep pace until the fourth quarter and see what you can do from there. When you're playing the Raiders, this game should be over before the 4th. I'm not sure if that'll be the case, but St. Louis will take care of business. Rams 24, Raiders 14. Bucks, Bengals. Like I said in the first segment, this is the last of nine, count them, nine early games this week. That's a lot. <laughs> The Bucs are still not a good football team at all. They once held a lead against the Bears, but it was slipped again, and so is the NFC South as the Bucs are now 2-9. Think about this way. The Bucs are two games out of first place in the NFC South and one game out of the first pick in the NFL draft. Cincinnati, on the other hand, has been taking care of business ever since Belichick said, we're on to Cincinnati. Now, I don't know where to not focus about the past, but the future, we're on to Cincinnati. And of course, the Bengals got whooped in that game against the Pats, but still, they've been doing their job. After finally getting over that hump in Houston, this seems to be a road game they should win easily, and they will. Bengals 27, Bucks 10. Sunday late, Falcons Cardinals. Well, this is another version of the Battle of the Birds, where both teams are on the opposite ends of the, of the stick. The Falcons are on the short end. <clears throat> At 4-7, and seven, they somehow lead the NFC South. <clears throat> and the Cardinals, on the other hand, had the long end. 9-2, and two, despite the loss they took in Seattle. <clears throat> I don't have much to say about this one. Except the fact that few, the Falcons' future this season is literally the last name of their owner, Arthur Blank. 
Cardinals 30, Falcons 7. Packers Patriots. Now this <clears throat> is a matchup that most fans have been waiting for so far. Two high-powered offenses that have shown their abilities the past few weeks and what some people are calling the Super Bowl preview. I don't think that's the case. There's no doubt Green Bay and New England are the two hottest teams in football right now. <clears throat> but the real question is, will these two be the best two teams in January? For right now, my answer is no. Pats 35, Packers 28. <clears throat> Sunday night <clears throat> for Chiefs Broncos. Last week it wasn't fun for Chiefs fans. Losing to Oakland is never fun, nor is it something to be proud of, nor is it something that should be on your resume. Denver, on the other hand, got back on track last week after beating Miami, after losing a shocker against St. Louis. Believe it or not, Kansas City still doesn't have a touchdown in their wide receiver core. Of course, their quarterback is Alex Smith. Not Peyton Manning. Just about every receiver on the Broncos roster is a touchdown for Peyton. And some will score a few on Sunday night. Broncos 28. <clears throat> Chiefs 17. And Monday night. Jets. Dolphins. <clears throat> Last week the Bills were lacking practice because of the snow that affected the West Seneca, New York area. But the Jets looked like the team they were in need were that really were in need of practice. Miami did lose to Denver, but they surely made a big game out of it. Like I said in last week's show, Miami is an up and down team on the road. Last week they were on the down. This week they'll be on the up. Dolphins 24. Jets 13. And that is our Week 13 show. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Enjoy the games today and enjoy the games Sunday and Monday. Hope you have a great Thanksgiving weekend. Enjoy your turkey with your families.